Welcome, dear ones, beloved in Christ, as we gather online to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are blessed that you are joining God's people of Nativity and St. Paul Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania, and pray that you are blessed as well on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. On Monday, August 3rd, food will be distributed at St. Matthew's parking lot from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Volunteers, please come around 9 o'clock. Please, everyone, contact a council member with your thoughts on the letter and plan that you received this past week. We need to know what you are thinking, and we will be sharing it this Thursday at our task force meeting, which begins at 6 o'clock. We have several prayer requests to lift before you today. Um, there were two folks who had procedures this past week. Both are doing well. Thank you, Jesus. So we pray for Ron and we pray for Evelyn. We ask for prayers for Ruthann and Sharon as they face ongoing tests. Robin took a fall this week. Um, Elijah continues to recover from his broken ankle. And we ask for prayers for Jason, who was in a swimming accident. Finally, we ask for prayers for parents, students, teachers, staff, administrators at all levels of education as they plan for the coming school year. Please, let's pray, let's be patient, and let's realize that people are doing the best that they can. And now, dear ones, let's worship Jesus. Always remember in our baptism, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Amen. Dear ones, let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our siblings as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let, Let your, your Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit work in, in us to change, to change our, our lives and to make us new, that, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our, our risen Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son alone to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, know that your sins are forgiven. Let perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with great joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 
Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah the 55th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel for he has glorified you the word of the Lord thanks be to God we will read together Psalm 145 verses 8 9 14 through 21 the Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. 
You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The second reading is taken from the book of Romans, the ninth chapter beginning at the first verse. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to the disciples, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were filled. And they looked, took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace, dear ones, beloved of Christ. From God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, lively and with us daily. Amen. Scarcity versus Abundance. This is the issue that we are faced with in the lessons for this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. You know that question that people ask, do you see the glass half full or do you see the glass half empty? How do you see it? We know that we are living in unsettling times. 
Friday marked six months since we heard the first warnings about this new thing known as the coronavirus. Six months. Doesn't it sometimes feel like it's been six years? In our country alone, there are over four million cases and more than 150,000 deaths. This past Friday also marked the day that the $600 weekly unemployment benefit ended, and Congress has not yet acted to renew it. People are facing scarcity, and people are fearful. Schools in Berks County and throughout the country are scrambling to come up with plans that are safe for students, teachers, and staff and provide education for the children who are entrusted to them. Some look on with concern of scarcity, and some look on with fear. In the beginning of this pandemic, healthcare workers were lauded as our heroes. They haven't received combat pay. They continue day after day, week after week, month after month, to go to their places of employment so that they can take care of the rest of us. Are we still taking the time to say thank you to them? Or have we become so overwhelmed in our weariness with everything that is going on that we're shutting down or we are perhaps withdrawing? Look at Jesus in our gospel reading today. Hearing about the beheading of John the Baptist, Jesus withdrew to a deserted place. Now we know that throughout scripture, Jesus did take the time to seek solitude, to pray, to be refreshed and renewed. I want you for a moment to think back to what we know about the murder of John the Baptist. Get your Bible and read the first part of chapter 14 in Matthew's Gospel. Talk about what some would call abundance, right? Herod throws himself a birthday party, inviting many, wanting to show off, and he has rich food and drink and live entertainment. And after the dance, he is so full of himself, and he impulsively asks what she wants and her request in this time of abundance, results in death, John's death. As we come to the second part of Matthew 14, what a contrast our Lord is to Herod. Herod, self-centered. Jesus, self-giving. While Jesus is looking for solitude and peace and quiet, He saw that the crowd had followed him, and scripture tells us that he had compassion for them and cured their sick. Jesus must have gone on to teach them and preach to them, and then as evening comes, our Lord recognizes that they are now experiencing a different kind of hunger, and he feeds them. No invitations are issued. No self-centered glorification occurs. No rich food and drink is on the menu. No seductive entertainment is put forth. No request result in death. Jesus Christ, as always, gives life. Taking simple food five loaves and two fish. Jesus blesses them and breaks them and gives them to his disciples to distribute to. And 5,000 men plus additional women and children are fed and nourished and given life with 12 baskets left over. Now that, dear ones, beloved of Christ, is truly abundance, God's abundance. 
I do love the prophet Isaiah, and we are blessed to hear the words from that book today. God's word from Isaiah's time. And we are reminded that these people hearing the words of the prophet are in exile, that they're hoping to return. They are living in the fear of scarcity. And God says to them, I want to replace this fear of scarcity with my great abundance. Ho, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Also, this past Friday, I bought a meal from Cafe Esperanza that is at Hope Lutheran Church here in Reading. The cafe, I know that many of you have heard about it, is a pay-as-you-are-able cafe that was to open in mid-March. It is a place where people would be able to come and to get a good, healthy meal and wonderful coffee, play, paying what they are able to pay. Some days, a person may come in who may not have any money, but could still eat. And on that same day, a person with a pocket full of money could sit at the same table, eating as well. In mid-March, the pandemic hit, and our lives were shut down, put on hold, including the cafe's grand opening. In the Gospel, the disciples at first saw a problem, but Jesus, Jesus saw a possibility. That's what happened at Cafe Esperanza, which, by the way, means hope. Two days a week, God's people say, Ho, come and eat, to their neighbors who may be hungry, and there is no charge as they receive a healthy meal. Some days they say, Ho, come and buy, to those who can afford it so that others may eat. That's what they did this past Friday. Buy a meal for a suggested donation of $25 so that others can eat. Abundance. God's abundance. This is what God's people of St. Paul and Nativity and St. Matthew and others will do this Monday. August 3rd at South 18th and Cotton Streets here in East Reading from 11 till 2 as we distribute food. Ho! Come and eat. Abundance. God's abundance. That's how our awesome God is, dear ones, beloved of Christ. God is abundant. God is generous. God is loving. God is grace-giving. Always, always with God's people, with everyone, for we are all God's. Hear the words of the psalmist. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. God's word. God's promise. Scarcity versus abundance. The world, perhaps, versus God. You and I, dear ones, beloved of Christ, are called to trust and to rely on the Lord, and he will give us life and give it to us 
abundantly. When the question is asked, do you see the glass half full or half empty? As followers of Jesus Christ, we can boldly proclaim that we see it as overflowing, even in times such as these. Amen. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourselves to all the nations and peoples of the earth. 
inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and hearing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregations such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. If you feel comfortable, please share the peace with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and worth, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bonds of death, and as he promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. He was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved of Christ, come to the table. Receive nourishment for today and all the days of your life. Thank you, Jesus. This is the body of Christ that is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. Amen. In this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor coronavirus, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless and keep you eternal love.